Hello humans, Retro Rocket Man, back again for another video. This time round, I'm going to be customizing a Orc Big Mech Artist Proof from McFarlane from the Warhammer 40,000 series. He's got a lot of cool detail. He's uh, just grey all over, like he's been primed and ready to paint. It's got a lot of intricate stuff going on and it should be a lot of fun to paint, if not a challenge as well. So sit back and relax and watch me give it a go. I'm going to start by taking it apart as best I can. Fortunately, a lot of these pieces came off relatively easily, except for the head. That was a bit more of a drama. Um, but uh, eventually got it off. So I'm going to start by just painting the orc coloured skin. Uh, in this case it's a green. I believe that's the, uh, the general colour of orc skin. I'm using a Tamiya flat green for the base colour. So I'm just going over the general fleshy areas that are exposed. This orc is pretty much like a cyborg, so he's got a lot of mechanical features to him as well, with a little bit of skin showing through. So just, just covering the areas that I can see with the flat green. And then I'll be going back in once that's dry with a dry brush ap approach. And just to bring out the highlights, I'm using a Tamiya XF71. Cock pea green. An unusual name, but it um, should complement this base color quite nicely. So I'm just lightly dry brushing just to try to bring out the raised areas and give it a bit more dimensionality and interest. And a lot of the metallic areas, I'm going to pre-paint them with a silver, just a, um, a chrome silver, a Tamiya. And there's a lot of this going on. So I'm just going to give them all one coat of the uh, chrome because I intend to overpaint it with a with a red, just a cheap and nasty acrylic, something that, that will um, be easy to remove later on. You'll see what I mean as I progress. So again, just concentrating on all the bits that I consider to be metallic and giving them a good silver coat. So while the, um, certain parts of the silver are drying, I'm also tackling his pants and they appear to be like a, a woven material. So I'm going in with a, just a brown, Tamiya brown, and giving that an all over go. And then I'm going to dry brush it with a mix of the brown and the white to create a lighter color. 
and I'm just dry brushing the areas, catching the uh, texture and the stitching, just to have it pop out. As you can see here, just giving it a little bit extra touch, just so it gives it more interest and makes it stand out. It's got some gnarly stitches, it looks like it's all hand stitched, it's pretty rough. Keep catching all the folds and creases as well, just so that they, uh, they pop. Carefully going over the lower legs now. Again, more metallic sections. So I'm just doing the chrome on these ones. Just like an undercoat that will be painted over and will show through later. I'm using some uh, mustard as a masking agent. This will um, allow, when I overpaint it with the red acrylic, once it's dry of course, should make it even easier to remove it and leave the silver to show through. So just randomly applying it, just do it to taste. And you have to let this thoroughly dry before you apply your top coat. In this case, I'm just using a cheap and nasty red acrylic because this is um, a very rustic finish and it's going to look like it's been hand painted, which in actuality it is. So everything I want to have some sort of red paint remnants is being painted red and then weathered and the uh, effect should be quite dramatic. There are also certain areas um, with hoses and things that um, I've painted with a, with a bright green and uh, again just a cheap and nasty acrylic, doesn't really matter. Once you clear coat everything it's all going to be nice and sealed anyway. So I'm just randomly painting areas that I want to have a red finish on them because I'm not making it the same on both sides because this figure is quite asymmetrical. So I'm sort of swapping things up and just doing it to my own taste. Now it's time to go in, once the red's dried, with a soft sponge scourer and just gently, with, with some water, 
remove some of the paint, usually on the high, high edges, and this will imitate weathering and distressing, scratches and scrapes. And you can see the lovely silver coming through almost immediately. And this is not a heavy handed approach, and it's quite random. You just keep doing it till you get the desired look. The mustard masking underneath comes off quite easily with this approach as well. So I'm, I'm after a battered and beaten and scratched and scraped appearance. It is Warhammer after all. You can see the sponge catching all those high areas and taking the paint off. Just to give it that random weather and warm appearance. So you just keep doing this till you get the appearance you like. You can do it as little or as much as you want. Now it's time to go in with the black shoe polish, black liquid shoe polish, and just grime and grunge up the uh, remaining silver parts. And this just um, tones it right down, grimes it down, and also helps the uh, details to really pop. So you brush it on, and then wipe it off while it's still wet left with a very heavy looking metallic surface. Yes, just how I like it. Lovely and dirty. So just about all the um, parts to this orc are being treated in this way. Even over the red, I'm doing the same thing. Just to d dirty that down as well. So it all looks uh, pretty uniform got like oily stains and just general grime. It certainly appeals to this kind of character I'm sure. Now on some of the logos, I'm going back in with a an off-white, just to uh, make it pop, make it stand out. And again, I'm only going in with a light touch because it's got to look weathered and worn as well. This is a Tamiya colour called um, Buff. It's a bit of an off-white colour. going and doing some of the uh, orc teeth with a, with a white acrylic and I'll be dirtying this down a little bit later with the buff as well. This is basically a, just a white undercoat. And 
I'm also just touching random areas with a fresh coat of the red just to give it more dimension to make it look like there are certain areas where some of the, the paint finish is still untouched. And it just gives it another layer. You know, I'm paying a bit more attention to some of the hosing, just giving it a black semi gloss paint. And his backpack, or whatever the hell this thing is, is getting the uh, shoe polish treatment as well, pretty much all over. After all, it's got to look like it belongs. There's so much intricate detail on these on this sculpt that it's uh, the black really makes it pop. See the, some of the weathered sections that I've done. And now I'm going in for some a bit more contrast, and I'm using a copper, a Tamiya copper. I'm just painting certain parts of the backpack just to give it some contrast and interest. And I'm touching up some of these rope sections with the uh, with the buff as well, just to uh, highlight the fact that it's um, material been tied and strapped and it's very ad hoc. And I'm using a metallic blue on the uh, I don't know what these are, these orbs as an under, undercoat just to make it um, that more interesting to look at and now I'm going over the top with a clear green all these are Tamiya colors on uh, these ones and I'm going to be using a clear red on these ones just to give me different looks Time for some brown shoe polish with a dry brush approach. And um, this just gives it a, the, the silver, the metallic, a bit more of a rust or grungy sort of dimension to it. This adds to the weathering. So I'm just going in random places where I feel there's a bit more grime and, and muck buildup. And I'm just using the brown shoe polish to just give it that much extra dimension. And it warms up the copper parts really nicely.
there you have it, fellow humans. This is my take on Warhammer 40k Orc Big Mech. Since you see all the weathering and uh, all the different details, it's quite an intricate figure, and he's got a lot going on. But I did enjoy this one, and I hope you've enjoyed watching the video, and I uh, hope you're as pleased with the outcome as I am. Quite plain and ordinary, not any colour on him at all, and now he's ten times better. So this is Retro Rocket Man. Hope you enjoyed it, fellow humans, and I'll see you in the next one. Over and out.